Hello everyone, this is Falcon Laser, and in this video, I'm going to explain in detail how Bose's Lifestyle Systems Media Centers compare to Yamaha's AV receivers, which are the receivers I show in my videos about Bose's 500 series lifestyle systems. While in those videos I explain some key differences, in this video I'm going to explain more differences in much more detail. I will say many of these differences are very technical and may not really matter to many people, but they still are worth mentioning. Not only that, I have a somewhat funny story to tell about a dealing I had with a few Bose dealers and a Bose fan, the moral of which is don't always trust them. Anyway, well, let's get started. I show three different AV receiver models in my videos, one of which is the RXV577, another is the RXA740, and the last one is the RXA840. Now the only real difference between these AV receivers is that they vary in sound quality and power depending on their price, but in terms of key features, they are pretty much the same. So anyway, let's begin. First of all, the only difference between the Bose Lifestyle 500 series systems and the older V-Class systems is the 500 series systems can be equipped with a Wi-Fi adapter for another $100 that will allow them to stream Pandora, internet radio, and music from your own playlists? Well, all of these Avery receivers can do the same thing, and they already have that feature built in. In fact, AV receivers have had this feature for a few years now, so it's nothing new. Anyway, a big deal about Bose's lifestyle systems is they have a feature called Adapt IQ, which equalizes the speakers to match the acoustics of the room they're in. Well, these AV receivers can do the exact same thing. In fact, most AV receivers on the market can do that. So unlike some people think, that's not a feature exclusive to Bose. Now, Bose's lifestyle systems do have a feature none of these AV receivers have, which is the Unify feature. And I think it is the best thing Bose has ever come up with. It shows you how to set up components to the system and it lets you select the component you want to use from a scroll down menu on your TV, so it makes Bose's systems very easy to use. Well, for these AV receivers, you can get a Logitech Harmony URC or Nevo remote that will do something similar. Here, I'll show you how my Nevo remote works. So, he has here a touch screen, and you can see it has like activities on it, like watch movie, play music, and auxiliary. So anyway, well, say you wanted to watch a movie. You'd go up here, you'd press Watch Movie, and in one button click, it will turn on all the components you need for the activity. It turns on here the Blu-ray player, the AV receiver, the TV. It'll turn the AV receiver to the correct input, and if you give it a bit here, it'll be ready to go. So. Anyway, in the remote, all the buttons on the remote will control the Blu-ray player. So, yeah. Anyway, if you want to shut it off, you just press the off button, and it'll shut off all the components. And the Logitech Harmony and URC remotes pretty much work the same way. And I include the cost of one of these in the systems I show in my videos. So the systems I show in my videos are arguably just as easy to use as Bose's Unify feature. Now these AV receivers, in order these remotes, show you how to set up components to them like Bose's Lifestyle Systems can. So that's one thing Bose's Lifestyle Systems do have over these AV receivers. But then, setup is something you're only going to do once, and once your system's set up, you won't have to set it up again. Or, you can pay a dealer to install your system for you, and that way you wouldn't have to set up your system at all. Also, I'll say another thing is the Bose Media Center does look nicer and takes up a bit less room than Yamaha's AV receivers. However, the question is, do you want to spend a ton of money on a system that has a nice looking AV receiver but has very few features, or a system that has an AV receiver that doesn't look as nice but actually has a lot of features that are up to date and reflect its value? And now, I'm going to explain some more technical things that further show how these AV receivers have more features and are more capable than Bose's Lifestyle Systems Media Centers. First, HDMI inputs. HDMI is the type of cable you want to use for just about everything. 
It's the only digital cable that can pass both audio and video, and it's the only cable that can pass lossless audio and 1080p or 4K video resolution. Now the RX V577 and the RX A740 have 6 HDMI inputs, while the RX A840 has 8. But Bose's lifestyle systems on the other hand only have 4. So you can connect more components to these AV receivers than you can the Bose Lifestyle 535 and 525 to where they'll perform to their full potential. In fact, if you run out of HDMI inputs, you'll have to go with a component video cable and either an optical or coaxial digital audio cable. So you'll end up having two cables. I know a lot of people say Bose Lifestyle systems have less cables than component systems do, but if you run out of HDMI inputs, you'll have to use two different cables. And you'd sooner run out of HDMI inputs on a Bose system than you would these AV receivers. So there's a chance a Bose system may have more cables than a component system that has one of these AV receivers. Speaking of video, these AV receivers can pass through 4K Ultra HD video resolution, which is four times the resolution of 1080p, while Bose's lifestyle systems cannot. So if you have a 4K TV with a Bose system, you won't get 4K video. Next, lossless audio. This is the audio Blu-ray discs have, and basically it sounds better than the audio regular DVDs have, and is actually close to matching the audio quality of the master audio tapes from the movie studio. Now, there's three different codecs. There's Dolby True HD, which according to BluRaySTATS.com, on the day this video was made, 1,171 Blu-rays are coded in, there's DTS-HD Master Audio, which 5,048 Blu-rays are coded in. And there's Linear PCM, which 623 Blu-rays are coded in. So DTS-HD is by far the most common Blu-ray audio codec. Now, in order to get this audio, your AV receiver needs to decode it. And these AV receivers, as pretty much every AV receiver in existence has been able to do for the last several years, can decode all three. While Bose's lifestyle systems, on the other hand, can decode Dolby True HD and Linear PCM, they cannot decode DTS HD Master Audio. Instead, they'll just down convert it to regular DTS and it will be compressed and therefore won't sound as good. So that means you will not get a vast majority of Blu rays sound quality potential on a Bose lifestyle system. Now, if you have a Blu-ray player that can convert DTS-HD and Dolby True HD to linear PCM, this can be averted on a Bose Lifestyle system. However, Bose Lifestyle systems are supposed to be easy to use, yet if you want the full sound quality potential of a majority of Blu-ray discs, you need to tweak your Blu-ray player, which sort of doesn't make Bose's Lifestyle systems as plug-and-play as they supposedly are. Now. The reason why Bose systems don't have DTS-HD leads me to my next point. But first I'm going to tell a story about some dealings I had with some Bose salesmen. Four years ago, a few months after the Bose Lifestyle V-Class and T-Class systems came out, I went to the nearest Bose dealer to me, which is actually a small specialty dealer like the one I'm in here. They're not a big box store and they actually sell good audio brands. In fact, the salesmen there say they sell Bose's lifestyle systems on the basis that they are easy to set up, easy to use, and take up hardly any space, which I totally will say they are. However, they will openly tell you a system that costs the same from the other brands they carry, some of which are Martin Logan, Definitive Technology, CAF, and NHT, will sound better. So even people who can make money on selling Bose will say Bose's speakers don't sound good for the money. But anyway, I asked the salesman there why Bose's systems don't have DTS HD, and they said it's because none of Bose's systems have 7.1 surround sound, which has four surround speakers instead of two. Now this makes no sense at all, as there's tons of 5.1 surround sound AV receivers and home theater in a box systems which only have two surround speakers that have DTS HD. So a couple months later, when I was bored, I called up a Bose showcase store in my area and asked why their systems don't have DTS HD, as I thought a salesman at a Bose dealer would know more. Well, it turned out the salesman I talked to didn't know why. 
In fact, he didn't even really know what DTSHD even was. Well, in pursuit of a straight answer, I ended up calling two other Bose showcase stores and one Bose factory outlet store. But it turned out none of them could give me a straight answer. The salesperson at one simply didn't know. The salesman I talked to at another, in fact, I actually talked to this store's manager, who said, somewhat arrogantly, the reason Bose systems don't have DTSHD is the same reason they don't have THX, is they don't want to pay someone to say how good their systems are when they already know how good they are. Totally true for THX. So THX is really nothing but a quality assurance badge that companies basically pay to have put on their products. But as I've explained, DTSHD actually does something, and if your system doesn't have it, a majority of Blu-rays heard on it won't perform to their full potential. And the salesman I talked to at the factory store said the same thing this manager said. And I have no clue where in the heck these salesmen got this idea, as it makes no sense at all. Also, a Bose fan here on YouTube said in a comment that the reason Bose systems don't have DTSHD is because DTSHD is unproven, and Bose doesn't want to put unproven technology in their systems. Well, if DTSHD was unproven, then a vast majority of Blu rays wouldn't be coded in it, so this makes no sense. Anyway, well, the next day, I called up Bose Technical Support, and it turned out the Bose dealer nearest to me, the one that also sells good brands and admits Bose systems don't sound good for the price, was right the entire time. The Bose tech support guy said the reason Bose systems don't have DTSHD is because none of their systems have 7.1 surround sound. And when I told the Bose tech support guy what those two dealers said about THX, he was totally dumbfounded on why they'd say that. So that is definitely not why Bose's lifestyle systems don't have DTSHD. As is the same thing for DTSHD not being proven, but then it wouldn't require a call to Bose tech support to figure that out. In fact, I later went up to the nearest Bose dealer to me again, and the salesman there said they heard Bose's systems don't have DTSHD because they don't have 7.1 surround sound from a guy who works for DTS. So while again, yes, this makes no sense, as there's tons of 5.1 surround sound AV receivers and home theater in a box systems that still have DTSHD, but Bose Tech Support and a DTS employee are probably the most authoritative sources on this matter. So this must be the reason, despite the fact it makes no sense. Anyway, well that leads me to my next thing about Bose's lifestyle systems. They do not have 7.1 surround sound, while these AB receivers do. While none of the systems I show in my videos have 7.1 surround sound, these receivers are at least capable of it, and if you wanted 7.1 surround sound, you could just buy another pair of surround speakers and you'd have it. Now yes, I know hardly any movies have 7.1 surround sound, even though that's changing, as many newer movies coming out do, and a vast majority of people don't want 7.1 surround sound. But the thing is, 7.1 surround sound has been around for several years now. I mean, AV receivers as little as $300 have it. And if Bose's lifestyle systems were supposed to be as good as Bose says they are, I'd think Bose's systems would at least be upgradable to 7.1 surround sound, especially since their lack of 7.1 surround sound is preventing them from getting DTS HD. Not only that, a Bose fan on YouTube once said in a comment that Bose is the Mercedes of audio. Well, I'd say Bose's lifestyle systems are more like a Chevy Sonic for a Mercedes price. But that aside, luxury cars typically have luxury features that aren't really needed. So I think if Bose's systems were truly the Mercedes of audio, their systems would have luxury features, which would include 7.1 surround sound at least as a capability. But anyway, well, I'd say those are the most notable differences between these Yamaha AV receivers and Bose's Media Center. And again, while Bose's Media Center does look nicer than Yamaha's AV receivers, and has a feature that makes it easy to set up, the question is, do you want to spend a ton of money on a system that has a nice looking AV receiver, but has very few features, or a system that has an AV receiver that doesn't look as nice, 
but actually has a lot of features that are up to date and reflect its value. Anyway, well, that's pretty much this video. I have five other videos about Bose's lifestyle systems in which I show systems you can get for the price of them. And one of those videos shows a system that costs less than both of Bose's lifestyle systems, but still sounds better. And since it has one of these AV receivers, it has more and better features. Anyway, thanks for watching.